joining us at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Dr. W.L. Johnson Sr. We're so grateful that you spend this time of worship with us each week, and we ask that you continue to spread the word of God by sharing this video. And also, have a blessed week.
Zion Finance Committee has made it possible for you to give your tithes and offerings by mail online at the church's website at www.mountziononline.org and in person on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. We certainly thank God for this opportunity to share with you again on this day. This is our Black History celebration. We decided to go ahead and have a Black History message even though we are not able to assemble ourselves together. And we have one of our faithful and fine members of this church in the person of Sister Odessa B. Hawkins, Odessa Hawkins, pardon me, and uh, she's the, the wife of Brother Fletcher Hawkins. They have one beautiful daughter, uh, Dr. Ursula Hawkins. And we are going to celebrate black history. So we're going to have a praise dance and follow that. Uh, Sister Hawkins is coming to us in her own way.
It is difficult to say what is impossible, for the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow. It may well be that the greatest song has not been sung. The greatest book has not been written. The greatest mountain has not been ascended. This is your challenge. Reach out and grab it and make it part of your life. The basic thing is to keep on moving. The words of Dr. Martin Luther King, let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for this day's journey that you have given us. Father, thank you for health and strength and, and peace of mind. And thank you, Father, for giving us the vision to continue the work that Dr. King started. Father, thank you for all of those who are gathered here to support this program. And use me, Father, as a vessel. Decrease me so that you can be increased. And let us leave this place fortified to continue the dream set forth for us. These and many other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Johnson, First Lady Mrs. Lena Mae Johnson, Associate Pastors, Deacons, the Mount Zion Church family, virtual friends and family, my father's children. I am humbled at being asked to present a Black History Month message. Here we are in this unusual season, a season of a pandemic. We find ourselves scattered having virtual church, virtual school, home employment, social distancing, mask wearing, and all oh, that dreaded isolation. We are facing increased suicide rates, increased social and economic injustices, racial disparities, increased crime, death every day, sickness of the worst proportions, political and social injustice, escalating tensions about the Black Lives Matter movement, the George Floyd murders, the Breonna Taylor murders, the Ahmaud Aubrey murders, and the list goes on and on and on. In the midst of all of this, God is in this storm with us. I believe that Dr. King's dream lives on now more than ever. So indulge me while I speak to you on the dream continues. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great job so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it? and come down to you, Nehemiah 6.3. Dr. Martin Luther King was one of the most influential black leaders of our time. He visualized a time when all of us, irregardless of race or social status, would be treated equal. He lost his life advocating for this. He tried his best during his time to make that dream a reality. Dr. King said that if justice sleeps in this land, yes. let it not be because we help lull it to sleep by our silence or our indifference. Let it not be from lack of effort on our part to arouse it from its slumber. The dream continues. We find ourselves in the year 2021. How can we continue this dream and how can we move ourselves forward? I want to share with you six ways we can keep that dream alive and move forward. The first is 
we must first and foremost seek God. Secondly, we must dare to dream. Thirdly, we must reestablish our system of pride and integrity as a race. Fourth, we must value ourselves. Fifth, we must work hard. And sixth, we must pull others up as we climb the ladder of success. First, seek God. God is omnipresent and near us always. He is in control of everything all the time. His power is ever present and he sustains us. We cannot make it without him. He said in Matthews 28, 2, behold, I am with you always to the end of the ages. God calls us to enjoy continued consciousness of his supreme greatness, beauty, and worth. God is worthy to be praised. He will lift up a bowed down head and ease a troubling heart. We need to cry out to God like the blind man of Jericho, Bartholomew did in Mark 10, 47. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Thy son of David, have mercy on me. Isaiah 55, 6 directs us also to seek God. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. God is truly able to do all things and can sustain us if we trust and believe in him. Fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Yeah. Isaiah 43, 1. Whosoever withdraw near to God must believe that he exists and reward those who seek him. Hebrews eleven six. Yeah. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continuously. The dream continues. Secondly, let's dare to dream. We may ask the question, what is a dream? And how does a dream become a reality? Webster describes a dream as a vision or fancy. Dr. King had a dream where he envisioned a day when everyone, regardless of the color of their skin or the content of their character, would be treated equal. Dr. King worked diligently trying to make that dream a reality by advocating for human rights and even going to jail when he had committed no crime. We have to dream of the future in order to have something to work towards. We too have to dream of a day when our children won't be judged by race but by character. Amen. We have to dream of a day when equal education will be available to all. We have to dream of a day when we will have equality on any and every job. We have to dream of a day when peace abiding young black boys won't get gunned down for wearing a red hoodie after dark, or an innocent black man Amen. get shot in the back and killed for taking the scenic route through a new neighborhood. We have to dream of a day when members only and restricted covenants no longer exist yeah. and white supremacy is buried alive and dead. Yeah. Yeah. We have to dream of a day when justice will be a reality for all of God's children. We have to dream of a time when all of God's children can get together and say, what a time, what a time, what a time. Amen. The dream continues. Amen. Thirdly, we have to reestablish our system of pride and integrity as a race. In the words of Dr. King, 
Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. He further said, there is nothing more dangerous than to build a society with a large segment of people in that society who feel they have no stake in it at all, who feel they have nothing to lose. Our elders were self-sufficient. They worked the fields, raised swine, poultry, beef, built their own homes, made their own clothes, and did not depend on anyone for their day-to-day -day substance. We as a race have lost our sense of pride and integrity. Yes. We yes. have become so arrogant and entitled that we think the world owes us something. And here, I'm not going to be apologetic. We have a high high school dropout rate a high teenage pregnancy rate, a high divorce rate, a high incidence of common relationships that are living relationships with no legal commitment, a high incidence of drug and alcohol abuse, and we have filled the prison systems. Amen. We no longer discipline our children or teach them right from wrong. Christian values, respect for self, or even respect for others. We spend too much time on Facebook and social media. Yeah. We spend our rent money on Louis Vuitton purses, acrylic nails, hair from the Asian hair store, the newest iPhone, and in the middle of a pandemic, we have packed out the nightclubs. We dress our children in name brand clothes that are so expensive, the value of the clothing could pay a mortgage note. We also don't make big sacrifices for our children. We need to make a sacrifice for, to provide technology for our children to be able to do virtual school, but that's not a priority for us. This has to stop if the dream is to continue. Amen. We have to find a way to get our pride and integrity back. We need to do a serious self-assessment and ask God to help us reestablish the pride and integrity that our race once had. We need to strive day by day to find that sense of pride and integrity that our elders who have gone from time into eternity had. But the dream continues. Fourth, we must value ourselves. We have allowed ourselves as a race of people to become devalued. Right. We have right. lost our ability to see ourselves as human beings who have dignity and self-worth. We define ourselves by material things, by the things that we own. Amen. We identify ourselves by the iPhones that we carry, the name brand purses that we buy, the red bottom shoes that we wear, the vehicle we drive, the weave we wear, the clothes on our backs. Right. We were created in God's image. We need to honor God by valuing ourselves. Amen. We need to Amen. cry out to God for guidance and direction, and he will direct us. In the words of Andre Crouch, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first believed you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed but the dream continues. Yes. Fifthly, we have to work hard. In order to achieve anything worth having, we have to work. There is pride in working. Our ancestors worked day and night Amen. to make a difference in their lives and in the lives of their children and their offspring. Amen. They worked under nearly impossible conditions to gain even basic rights. 
Work out your own soul salvations, Philippians 2.12. Work as well as believe, and in daily practice, you can feel more sure that you are pleasing him who said, go into my vineyard and work, and whatever is right, I will pay you, Matthew 20 and 4. Dr. King said, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep the streets, even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the host of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job extremely well. Tabby Smiley said to be ready when your opportunity comes and learn to think critically for yourself. You have to work in order to strive for success. Teach young children and teach them that honest labor develops dignity and self-respect. Help them to find pleasure in work and to feel the satisfaction from a job well done. We have to start here somewhere. The child creeps in order that he may someday walk. He prattles unintelligibly in order that he may someday properly enunciate his words. People who are not trying to do anything should not interrupt those who are trying. There is more power in purpose than in random chance. Work hard for what you want because it won't come to you without a fight. You have to be strong and courageous and know that you can do anything you put your mind to. If someone criticizes you or puts you down, keep on believing and having faith in yourself and turn that negative into a positive. And the dream continues. Lastly, always be humble because the toes you step on today may be connected to the behind that you have to kiss tomorrow. And those are the words of Tavis Smiley. We must pull ourselves up to climb the ladder of success. We are not an island and do not exist in the world alone. I challenge each of you to look for opportunities to help someone else. This is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to continuously stand in the gap for others. Open your heart to others. Be receptive and willing to go that extra mile for someone else. Offer to mentor a young person who may be interested in your field of study or your career. Pray for your neighbor and those in need. Ask God to give you whatever you need in order to be a blessing and to help others. Strive to always be a blessing to someone else. The dream continues. In closing, I want to share a poem with you and I want to leave this as food for thought. And as you go forward, I want you to really think about the magnitude of these words. It's titled, Lord, Why Did You Make Me Black? And it's penned by Runet Nia Ebu. Lord, why did you make me black? Why did you make me someone the world wants to hold back? Black is the color of dirty clothes, the color of grimy hands and feet. Black is the color of darkness, the color of tire-beaten streets. Why did you give me thick lips, a broad nose, and kinky hair? Why did you make me someone who receives the hatred stare? Black is the color of a bruised eye when someone gets hurt. Black is the color of darkness. Black is the color of dirt. How come my bone structure is so thick? 
my hips and cheeks so high? How come my eyes are brown and not the color of the daylight sky? Why do people think I'm useless? How come I feel so used? Why do some people see my skin and think I should be abused? Lord, I just don't understand. What is it about my skin? Why do some people want to hate me and not see the person within? Black is what people are listed when others want to keep them away. Black is the color of shadows past. Black is the end of the day. Lord, you know my own people mistreat me. You know that just isn't right. Why don't they like my hair or the way I look? Some say I'm too dark or too light. Lord, don't you think it's time for you to make a change? Why don't you redo creation and make everyone the same? God answered, why did I make you black? Why did I make you black? Get off your knees and look around. Tell me what do you see? I didn't make you in the image of darkness. I made you in the likeness of me. I made you the color of coal from which beautiful diamonds are formed. I made you the color of oil, the black gold that keeps people warm. I made you from the rich dark earth that can grow the food you need. Your color's the same as the panther, known for her beauty and speed. Your color's the same as the black stallion, a majestic animal is he. I didn't make you in the image of darkness. I made you in the likeness of me. All the colors of the heavenly rainbow can be found throughout every nation. And when all these colors are blended well, you became my greatest creation. Your hair is the texture of lamb's wool. Such a humble little creature is he. I am the shepherd who watches over them. I am the one who watches over thee. You are the color of the midnight sky. I put the star's glitter in your eyes. There's a smile hidden behind your pain. That's the reason your cheeks are high. You are the color of dark clouds formed when I send my strongest weather. I made your lips full so that when you kiss the one you love, they will remember. Your statue is strong. Your bone structure thick to withstand the burdens of time. The reflection you see in the mirror, the image looking back at you is mine. Thank you.
To the new safety standards, we encourage everyone to stay safe and healthy by practicing social distancing, staying at least six feet apart from other individuals, and washing and sanitizing your hands for at least 20 seconds on social media for church news and more. Thank you for worshiping with us. <laughs> 